Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, this one I'm going to keep relatively quick here. Amazing day, uh, especially from the morning. We're up 9%, 18% on MSTU and MSTX, uh, which the MSTX I just noticed today, I might have been a little bit late, did convert to two times leverage from the 1.75 times. Uh, and I just thought that's interesting that they have two funds that, that equal um, leverage at different price points with different options. So uh, it just I think it's interesting. So um, here are my three best plays for December 20th strike options. Uh, I'm going to give you three different stocks. Two of them are going to be the same uh, in terms of Bitcoin derivatives, and one of them is going to have nothing to do with Bitcoin. Uh, so yeah, let's get into it. First, let's walk through the Bitcoin chart, um, kind of what we're seeing today. Just want to give you uh, a little re-glance of this. This is in towards. This is the daily time frame. You're seeing a nice period of consolidation. And, and one thing that I want you guys to understand as we figure out how to um, kind of make this. Okay. One thing I want you guys to kind of understand here is MicroStrategy and Marathon Digital are, are, tra are traded as leverage. Now, Marathon Digital is traded in the downward pressure territory, while MicroStrategy is just traded to the upwards pressure territory. Um, that's just because that's how the system's working. There's flow out of uh, Mara, flow into MicroStrategies um, in terms of what people want from leverage. And it's just the way the system is, is working right now. The system's always changing. Uh, but I want you to note that Marathon Digital will come into positive buy territory. I don't think of, of how the traders trade the stock. I don't think MicroStrategies will ever come out of it. It's going to be very difficult. The, the way you're going to trade the stock is going to be flush money in. And what I mean by this, just so you guys can signify some sort of type of example, what I mean is the volume on the way down supersedes the volume on the way up with how, how far the stock moved. That's very, very rare. Typically, high volume is traders distributing um, and it requires lower volume to get the stock down. This is requiring higher volume to move the stock down, which just is very, very explicative that there's low amount of people selling and likely the people selling are, are micro strategies themselves to raise capital to buy Bitcoin. It Once again, I'm reiterating the, reiterating the fact this is crazy. Um, in terms of how much Bitcoin they're actually buying, if you don't already know. Um, and simply, I'm just going to get off this thing because I'm disabled with that stock chart there. Um, <clears throat> so, sure, on the five minute, we're breaking down. This is compression leads to expansion. Uh, simply getting below, hovering, consolidating at this 10, 200 moving marker. But we're always bullish on Bitcoin, so I expect this to be just like a fake cutter underneath the 200 kind of act as support after we got above it um, and look to break this line we still got two and a half hours in the day um, and remember when we look at the ibit uh, ibit money flows where's the, these are the best flows to look off of there's flow coming in there's still positive buy flow they are ordering this stock to be bought up so uh, we know that blackrock is buying i'm sure we're breaking bearishly uh, below the 100 and 200 moving average on the five minute, but that's nothing to be concerned about. We are in this bullish channel upwards, and very, very soon, whether it's t today uh, or more likely tomorrow now, uh, after it's uh, the high volume part of the day is being passed, we break 93,500, and you're then once again off to the races. And we see this indicatively because as we came into a consolidation period in terms of micro strategies, what did we see? We saw leverage come off, and now we are seeing Bitcoin not necessarily break out, but kind of come back to this breakout of a consolidation period, and you're seeing people anticipate leverage on. So it's very nice to see that. It's very nice to see a big volume day on lower volume, um, and likely this is just actually people buying the stock rather than micro strategies selling it down. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> I, I love the breakout here. I do think that your next spot range is 500. The options flow is telling you that as well, and so with $500 in, in, in the very, very forefront, um, the leverage play of MSTU, MSTX is, is just, this is what you want to be doing here because they're selling you two times leverage on something that's about to do, let's say, a 30, 40% gain. This thing is easily going to 200 bucks. So if we just kind of look at the options, as you get really far out of the money, they're not nice options, right? Uh, 
buying at the money options is a lot nicer on these and sure you could get uh, like five six times leverage on these but if you're spending up through 2500 bucks on an option I'd be more likely to go just hit the 150s and you could slap three of these instead of buying 100 shares uh, 150s these are very nice uh, what did I personally pick up I personally picked up some MSTX's uh, which are doing the exact same thing and I picked up actually some 135s out of the money and I picked up three of these or two of these I think for 22 bucks uh, I like these a lot uh, this stock is definitely set to go to 220 uh, maybe even 300 um, by December 20th and, and to pick up leverage on, on these shares and then not only that but after this goes up when this rips up I am going to be selling the 200 250 dollar 20 30 dollar options on this stock hundred percent right selling them back selling you back the premium encapsulating the volatility um, and then looking to re-enter the position by once again selling back these cash covered puts these puts are ridiculous thirty dollar puts twenty dollar puts fifteen dollar puts all the way out of the money I would be selling everything I can on these because I'd only want to own this stock now without further ado um, in terms of marathon digital down five and a half percent today uh, they just did a $700 million share offering. So look for things lead into compression to expansion. This is compressing very nicely down and it's holding support on the 200 moving average. Uh, so a lot of people who got out of the stock have gotten out of the stock that don't want to be in it. We look at the order flow and like I said this morning, you knew it was going to be green. It's going to continue to stay green. It's going to close green because the shorts are covering this, the shares. This is the most manipulated stock on the stock market. And so without further ado, looking in towards the December 20th, um, in terms of call options, these are all very, very cheap. Uh, but I'd stick to round at the monies. You can just get these, pick these up for very cheap, $20. You see the $23, $25, but there's not much price change. So you might as well just, you could do 10 for one um, leverage on this stock and, and, and pick up the 20. So that's what I would be doing. They're fairly cheap. You still got 32 days. Um, it's not going to stay compressed forever because Bitcoin is in this very nice bullish breakout. Even though we're bearish in the last few hours, um, it just topped another resistance point. And, and the underlying support line is much stronger, much more heavier weighted, um, and is being backed by uh, Michael Saylor and soon other countries and entities uh, to continue buying up any dips there are. So uh, the last stock on, on the list, I just gave you some two at the money and a little bit out of the money. MSTX leverage on MSTR and Marathon Digital. I'm still bullish on them as many people are capitulating. I'm still bullish. And the last one is SMCI. Which ones did I pick up? I picked up one, uh, little bit, I guess two weeks out. I picked up in the money is $20. Uh, I picked up three of these. So these are the ones I'm looking at. It's a nice breakout. MACD is crossing it's about to get above the 10 moving average you're looking to hit the 20 moving average and that's almost 50 percent um profit margin and, and that doesn't even close the gap so this is the first gap after the gap and go uh we could bring up a good indicator which i don't use that much but i will here you, you look at the rsi when you want to use rsis is daily time frame and not when it enters the bullish or bearish divergence, but when it comes out of the bullish or bearish divergence. Because it can stay overbought territory or oversold territory for very long times. And so you see right here, how did this react? It went from $41 and it hide at $48. So not much of a move there, uh, but you could have encapsulated some of that move up and towards 50 where you would have had to sell out don't always expect it to get all the way back to overbought territory i'm just saying this is coming out with a strong move 20 percent off news um and i read a nice article about them so i'm kind of dovish on it uh 11 18 you have a few days to get up towards uh this this kind of mediocre territory so uh, i i'd very much be watching this and and one of my favorite ones that there's only i think 10 million assets in this is the SMCY and I think it's a very good value buy right here um, I like it a lot uh, take it off the weekly they paid out a dividend five dollar dividend so that this next dividend might be two three bucks but you're still getting a very very nice dividend uh, only 10.5 million dollars in assets in this stock I think they're very undervalued if you just look at SMCI and then you, you compare them to what they do to all these other companies uh, that are in the similar sector what are they at they're at 13 billion dollar company it's ridiculously low um, when you compare them to Nvidia Nvidia can be moving in like a five minute time frame 13 billion 
dollars, right? Like, what, what was their daily percent range, right? Their percent range was three percent, and let's call them a three trillion dollar company. They moved ninety billion dollars. They moved like seven times the entire company, and they do five times more revenue. It, it it's ridiculous. So I I I would be I, I don't like playing against the flows of energy, but you got a small flow of energy that's coming back in and it's signifying something good. So I'd be looking to play this uptrend. I like this re-entered. I cut it when it broke this trend line right here. Uh, I was upset that I was out because I was like, this is at 50. It's going to blow. And then I'm schmooked on news. Uh, and I'm so glad I was out of it. But I'm looking to re-enter this. I don't think this is a failing company. I think this is just a manipulated company. Manipulated to the upside and manipulated to the downside. I guarantee you some people got schmucked over here shorting it. Uh, and they're coming back for revenge here. But this is right along the 200 moving average, right? So your 200 moving average on your weekly is going to definitely act as support. Um, it's definitely bullish convergence. And you just look at like how it's looking on the five minute. It got up to 22.70. If you turn on the extended hours, $23 was its high. You turn on the hourly, it's looking to break above the 200 moving average, including the extended hours. Um, look at this chop schmop break. This is all good. This is the, this is a very nice breakout. Compression to expansion, oversold. Should be people covering bullish news. Um, easy plays like this. You just pick up on these, uh, and you're going to be good. So if you wanted something other than crypto, this is your non-crypto play, and it's actually semiconductor play. Everyone loves the semis. So uh, SMCY, I, I, I really like it. I really like SMCY. Uh, there's the risk that this gets delisted, but I, I can't see it getting delisted. Otherwise, it would have already been delisted, right? It's like... Anticipating a delist, uh, delisting is just a stupid anticipation. So, um, I'm against it. I, I wouldn't allocate all my capital here. I'd allocate all my capital MSTR derivatives. But um, you want something else? I did pick up something else. And then, oh, sorry guys, this is really important. Um, these two posts here. So you know how I've talked about how like um, there's like an inflection point, a critical point where the system changes. Uh, and, and then and I think that it's going to get into orbit this is it right here so this is the price of Bitcoin and then this is how much uh, bitcoins on the reserves um, and so as you more Bitcoin is a mined and then B wanted to be liquid datable they want to sell it easily uh, more Bitcoin comes on to the uh, exchanges but recently the money's been coming off of the exchanges and I believe that we have reached our frame and it's going to continue to flow off because there's just going to be one of to be cold hard storage and it's not going to be liquid and transactable which is going to exponentially curve the price up uh until we heat like hit like an inflection point of marginable uh exchange reserves and then an equilibrium of a price point which accommodates what it's actually meant to do so uh we're very far off this is just the beginning of the inverse correlation that used to be positively correlated um and does this make sense we ask ourselves does this make sense well yes uh as something that you wouldn't want to hold forever goes into price discovery you're going to want to sell it and that's what's happened more money has been exchanged but as this price discovery has happened to, to uh, give this price discovery, there had to be people who did want to hold it, did want to store it, and did want to use it. And we're, we've reached the peak of how many people wanted to do that. And now there's the more people, instead of wanting to take the gains that they can get by bringing on new Bitcoin, they actually just want to hold their Bitcoin because there's nothing better to hold. And so we're seeing this come to its frame, the frame of understanding, and now we're moving in the opposite direction. So very nice catch this here. Um, and then one other thing, I just saw this because it was the one I saved below it. Um, forward PE ratios, large cap and uh, mid cap. Inverse correlation here. S&P 500, S&P 600. Same inverse correlation here. Typically, these are pretty tight along these lines. Um, and this led into the dot-com bubble, but it first went up before it crashed. I expect, once again, first go up before it crashes uh, as these kind of valuations attempt to kind of correct themselves and come closer together uh i think trump's going to be very very good at this but i think we're in more of this this ai revolutionary in industrial uh advancement of society and people are looking at these these raw data numbers and they're attempting to say that hey look the economy is doing bad but the problem is is it's not doing bad because all the rich people have the money and now the rich people have a way to store their money so it's really just the poor people doing bad i um, mean the people not working so um that's my thoughts that's what i'm thinking uh those are the three plays like i said i mean above 2270 look at the volume coming in here take off the extended hours 
five minute put it on um nice breakout in towards the end of the day this is like this could easily get up to 30 bucks boom those are ten dollar schmooker options um, and then I can sell vol back on on like 35s out of the money because I got two weeks on them so I can sell the next week so I'm looking for the move this week and then sell the vol into the next week's it's the same thing as MSTR I'm looking for the move in towards the next couple weeks in towards the early December I'm looking for this $500 move once it gets up to 500 you want to gamble at the 700 I'm gonna start fishing out there so uh, that's my plan that's what I'm looking at and keep the short on it here.